Hey, what's going on, roleplayers? It's the Bard here, and welcome back to the corner. So, I wanted to try something a little bit different today, and I'm going to answer one of my comments. A good quick filler video, if you want to spend more time on an in depth vid, would be your top 10 favorite magic items or top 10 most useful. That's not a bad idea, actually, because I haven't done anything on magic items for the entirety of this channel. But there are a few things I want to address. First of all, I don't like top 10 videos. Personally, I find top 10 to be a little bit clickbaity, as well as the fact that they are often oddly specific or there's no real context around them. But I do like the idea, and I want to look at some magic items that I like to use or I think would be potentially effective, as well as for which characters who would want to have them. I think it's difficult to just relegate all the magic items to a potentially top 10 list, because what's top 10 for a fighter is going to be very different from what's top 10 for a wizard. Regardless, however, again, it's a very good idea and I want to delve into the magic items, so let's get cracking with some of my favourite magical items and who I think would benefit the most from them. Alright, let's get into this. We're going to work through the DM's guide roughly in the order in which these items appear, so just to make things easier for points of reference. So my first item of choice for any character would be the Bag of Holding. This one is a staple favourite for any adventuring party and is probably one of the most useful items you'll ever come across. However, what I particularly like about this one is that it's an uncommon item, meaning it's not particularly difficult to get hold of and it's relatively easy to build if you're using Xanathar's Guide to Everything Item Creation Rules. The table for magic item crafting time and cost can be found on page 129 of Sanathar's Guide to Everything. For two weeks work and 200 gold pieces according to these rules, this is something that's very doable between adventures. Almost every character can benefit from one of these, and the more characters that have them in the party, the more treasure you'll be able to take with you. In fact, every time I run a long campaign, one of the first items all of my players try to get their hands on is a bag of holding, whether they try to go out specifically searching for one, or if they're trying to buy one from a magical item vendor, they just try as hard as they can to get hold of this item first. I feel this item benefits rogues the most, due to the extra dimensional space which you can fit larger items in, and the fact that it doesn't actually add to the weight of the bag, you can carry around a lot more things that you've pickpocketed, or even things that you've taken from a residence, and walk out without actually having anything visible on your person. Just as a word of caution, however, be careful about what bags you're putting your hands into in case your DM has been particularly cruel and given you a bag of devouring, which basically looks like the bag of holding anyway. I would guess because the bag of holding is such a useful and well-recognized item, someone decided that this would be a good idea. Therefore, guys, just be careful whilst you're out on your adventures. My name is Bag, and when it's time to get me food, I open wide, I munch the loot. Alright, enough silliness. Time to move on. My next item is the Bag of Tricks. I love this item, it's absolutely incredible. This is an uncommon item as well. This item allows you to pull fuzzy objects from the bag and throw them on the ground which then transform into creatures. These creatures will last until the next dawn, or until they run out of hit points. You can use this item three times per day, which should be more than enough, and it's usable again at the next dawn, so you never truly run out of creatures to pull from this thing. This item is great at creating meat shields for combats, and it's also really good for druids and other characters that can talk to animals when it comes to having scouting information. And for an uncommon item, it's fairly easy to build, and it should be moderately easy to find. While it is a little bit random as to what you're going to get out of this bag, I do enjoy a little bit of chaos every once in a while, and if you're lucky enough to pull a bear or a lion out of the bag, then you're going to find life a lot easier, especially when it comes to encounters, either because people aren't going to want to come near you, or because anyone who does is going to have to contend with an absolutely enormous animal as well as a fully armed party of adventurers. Next up is the Boots of Elvenkind. While there are more powerful boots out there, these ones are uncommon and they do not require any attunement. Advantage on dexterity stealth while moving might seem oddly specific, but then again look at some of the other boots. Again, they tend to have oddly specific conditions or oddly specific things that they do. While certain more powerful boots may present you with more options or may have more inbuilt magical effects, the amount of times that you're going to need them is probably going to be limited, whereas something like the Boots of Elvenkind, you can almost always make use of the stealth bonus that it gives you. I think that the Boots of Elvenkind are great for any character, 
although they particularly benefit stealth specialist characters such as rogues and rangers. There are a number of different magical items that provide flying to a character, but I really like the broom. Not only does it look thematically good, particularly if you're a sorceress character, but also because it's very easily obtainable. The flying broom has a speed of 50 feet if you're not weighing over 200 pounds. If you are carrying over 200 pounds, then it has a speed of 30 feet, which is still relatively good. Once combat becomes three-dimensional, then things really start to get interesting. Whilst I would technically prefer a flying carpet, the smaller the flying carpet gets, the more weight capacity and the more size it trades off in order to get higher speed. If you're only going to be using the flying item yourself and you weigh less than 200 pounds with all your gear, then you're probably better off just taking the broom anyway. And considering the fact that magic carpets are very rare items, the chances of you seeing one are extremely slim. Whilst the advantage of flight is something that everyone would like to have, I'm certain that spellcasters would benefit from it greatly because they don't have to waste spells on the fly spell, and then they don't have to worry about being attacked in melee combat either. They can just sit up out of reach of the melee combatants and continue to use their spells from range. The Cloak of the Bat is the first rare item on my list, and also it's the first one that actually requires any attunement. This is a really useful item because it helps to free up some of your other slots with varying different abilities, ones that aren't necessarily similar to each other, but each have their own distinct use. So for example, this thing gets advantage on stealth checks, you also get a fly speed of 40 feet, and you have the option to polymorph into a bat creature. So you've got a variety of different things that aren't too similar to each other, this makes it a very, very good item. This item's only real drawback is the fact that you can only make full use of it when you're in dim light or darkness, but that's not really a big issue. It's Dungeons & Dragons. Most of the time you're going to be in dim light anyway. Regardless of lighting conditions, however, you still always get the advantage to stealth rolls, which can be extremely useful. So if you don't have access to things like Elven Boots or Elven Cloak, then this can be a really good substitute, especially considering the fact it only takes up one slot, whereas that combination of other items from the Elven group would take up two. The Polymorph platform is excellent for when it comes to scouting, so I can really see this being of benefit to any Ranger or Rogue style of character. The Decanter of Endless Water is probably my second favourite quality of life magical item after the Bag of Holding. There's almost no scenario where you wouldn't want endless, clear, fresh drinking water. Additionally, the Geyser effect is great for just knocking a creature prone. If you haven't got the capacity to do it through spells, or if you don't have a battle technique that allows you to knock a creature prone, then this is a really good substitute. The low save DC on this, however, does mean you're not going to be using this against higher tier creatures, but at the very least it's an option there if you need it. But mostly you just want this for the clean, fresh water that provides, saving you spells like Purify Water, and saving time when it comes to things like survival. The last item for this video is going to be the Dust of Disappearance. This is a consumable item, but I absolutely think it's worth it. Again, if you're using Xanathar's Guide to Everything rules when it comes to item creation, you can make this for as little as 100 gold pieces. At least one party member should consider carrying this around with them at all times. As soon as things start to get way out of hand, total party invisibility is just one action away. This works even better for the Thief Archetype because then you've only got to spend a bonus action in order to use this. This is ideal for situations like combats that you don't want to be a part of. You can also use this effectively to bypass certain guards on patrol. On top of that, you can use the Dust of Disappearance to make objects invisible as well, allowing you to potentially trap a room in order to hide things that you don't want others to find for a brief period. As long as it fits within the radius, it can be turned invisible. This consumable is exceptionally good for characters who struggle with stealth. So characters who are wearing heavy armor, for instance, fighters, paladins, clerics. If you have the capacity to cast invisibility, then it's definitely worth making yourself two or three batches of Dust of Disappearance, if you can find the time to do so between adventures. That was some of my thoughts on different magical items that I prefer to use or ones that I think can be most effective. That was a really interesting departure from the usual content on the channel, so thanks for that comment. Before you all start writing in the comments, I know that that last one was actually a picture of the dust of sneezing and choking, but I couldn't find a decent picture of dust of disappearance. That's not a funny joke or anything, I just couldn't find a decent picture of it. 
I'm going to carry this on for a couple more parts perhaps because there's a lot more I want to say about magic items and I don't want to cram them all into one video. If you like this video please leave a thumbs up, if you've got something to say or you've got your own magic items that you want to talk about leave them in comments down below. If you haven't subscribed yet why not consider doing so, if you do I will send you your very own pouch of dust of disappearance. Click that subscribe button and I will send it out, it will be with you in the morning. If you don't see it in your mailbox tomorrow, don't worry, it just means that it's doing its job. Speaking of subscriptions as well, we have just reached 5,000 subscribers on the channel. It might not be a lot to some people, but it's certainly a lot to me. Thank you so much for everyone who's been a part of this channel. That goes for everyone who's been here since the beginning, right the way up to the most recent subscribers and everyone in between. Thank you so much for all the support. You've been great. The comments have been amazing. The video ideas have been incredible. And it's been such a pleasure to make videos for all you guys. And especially like to say thank you for all of you who showed such concern for me in my absence as well. Thanks again to everyone who's a part of the channel, leaving comments, subscribing, being a part of the community. You guys are amazing. And with all that being said, I will see you guys next time at the gaming table.